Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the DIY stacked worm bin. And what we're going to, what I'm currently trying to do is get everything back to base conditions after having thrown everything kind of together during the, the worm apocalypse. So I'm trying to get everything that's super done um, harvested and any overs. Uh, put into the leftover bin. So that's what we're doing today. And I think I'm just going to start by picking off some of the, the large stuff here and kind of gathering that together and putting it in the overs bin. And then we're going to dig in here and see what's going on. All right, we've got a little bucket I can throw things into here. Then we can start digging around and, and seeing what I've got. These castings do look super finished, with the exception of the little bits of food that we have going on here, but they also kind of feel too wet to sift. So that might be a little bit of an obstacle. I might just take this and put it into like a mortar tray for it to dry out. And let's see what we've got. Still finding quite a few of these compostable bins, bin bags, sorry. Um, yeah, so they, they're making progress, um, as I've said before, but not enough that I would continue using them for a worm bin. If I had a lot of outdoor hot compost, maybe, um, but really, honestly, they're not fast enough for the worm bin, and they do accumulate really fast if you have like one or two a week that you're producing. I use them in my little um, sink side um, container for compost um, at work, but uh, this year I'm going to come up with a different plan. Let's see, so I'm not really finding any food left here. Kind of going all the way to the bottom here. I'm not seeing where I fed. I think I just, maybe I fed down the next level down. So I'm not, this all looks really quite finished, with the exception of the avocado shells and you know, obviously the compostable bag things. They're not finishing up, but I'm not finding anything that I would have fed recently. But yeah, I think this stuff is ready to dry out and then I can restart the top of this bin. Looks like there's a decent amount of worms in here. Not, you know, anything where we were at, you know, five months ago, but as I've said with other bins, that is better. They are recovering faster than I anticipated. So, you know, I've got a lot of worms, but they're little. Yay for the little guys. So yeah, this is some, obviously some really nice stuff, but it is not really compostable, or, you know, not really siftable. It is compostable, duh. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to pull this out and start a migration on this one as well. But it's kind of wet. Maybe I should just, maybe I'll just leave it open and it should dry pretty soon. Yeah, I don't want to handle things like two and three times. It just adds to the amount of work. So I think I'll just do a really good fluff and pick through here, and then when I go to feed, I will start a migration. Because otherwise I'll lose the worms in the bin for a while, and although I'm sure there's quite a few in the next levels down, need all hands on deck to get the breeding and the population back up there. So... 
This is a mix of the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, the blue worms, um, all living nice together here. Okay, so I am going to take off this top portion here and then we'll see what's going on in the next level down. All right, here we are in the next layer down, and it seems to be in about the same shape. Got some things in here, but for the most part it's pre-worked over. When we went through and had to repopulate a lot of the worms, I know that things got mixed up in, in the order that they were actually trying to get finished. So what I would love to do is to have all these worms out of here and start this bin brand new. That's not what I wanted to do. So maybe I can start a multi-tiered migration. I don't treat, I kind of treat this like it's, uh, what are those called, worm, worm 360s or something, to where they go up and down, um, but that doesn't really, they don't move up and down as they're finished. I just see that they move up and down as they feel like it, not so much related to the completedness of any particular layer. going to do the same thing. Well, this, I don't know, this must have been a feeding here of something. Got quite a bit of worms in here. I'm not sure what they're doing. No, I know what they're doing. I just don't know what they're eating. It was a, looked like some kind of a coffee filter with some stuff in it. Okay, well, I'm going to pop this out, and then we're going to look at the underneath one. Okay, here we are at the lowest layer here. It is super done, as we generally see on this layer. Normally we do see the bottom layer stays the most moist, the least disturbed, and I do tend to see it um, quite often being ahead of the game even if they're started at the same time. But that's kind of what I mean by they don't move up and down in response to food or not food. They just tend to uh, go where they want. Even though the holes are big enough for adults you know, to come and go, generally you will see them well dispersed and literally, as I'm saying that, I'm looking through this saying, I don't really think I have as many worms down here in the bottom as I do in the rest of the in the rest of the bin. I think I probably can take this and move this to a mortar tray. There are really not that many worms in here. Don't you love that when I instantly contradict myself? Yeah, there's there's like not even ten percent of the worms that were in the rest of them. Let me go see if I can find another mortar tray. All right, I'm just going to dump this into the mortar tray and I'll be back. All right, there we go. Now we can restart this layer at the very least. All right, here is some of the prepared bedding. This has only been sitting for probably four or five days, so it's not as far along as I'd like it to be. Now this is part of the prepared bedding that has the green sand and the, the kelp meal in it. So this should be 
full of uh, beneficial bacteria that can start something for the worms to eat down here. Now let's go find them some food. What do we got? Looks like quite a bit of coffee, coffee filters. Not really seeing a whole bunch of food in here. Yeah, maybe like some apple peels or something. It'll be good. It'll be something for them to get started on. Like I said, the prepared bedding is only not even a whole week old, so it's a possibility that they might not want to go down here quite yet. This will give the food some time to uh, incorporate with the bacteria and get working. All right, so I'm going to go get the second layer and we'll start working on that. All right, here's layer number two. I dumped most of that out onto the, the top layer and we'll just migrate that. I'm just going to leave this down here and put some of the bedding in here as well. Just trying to get some of the beneficial bacteria from the leftover castings mixed in. Let's get them some food. Again, mostly coffee, coffee filters. Got a nice big apple there for them, though. It's, I'm not sure why it got thrown away. But it was the end of the year, and everybody was cleaning out the refrigerator at work, so it might have been that kind of a situation. Better for the worms to have it than for it to go in the landfill. All right, so that's quite a bit of coffee. Would not be surprised if I saw kind of an explosion of springtails and, and things like that. It's possible that that needs to be pre-worked or is, is, you know, is a little orange. All right, well, I'm going put to that, put that in the middle. A little orange in the middle and the rest of it can be coffee. And then I will bring the upper layer and put it back. Okay, here we are uh, back on the top layer. I've taken the second layer and put it in with the top layer. And I'm going to just leave this open to the air so that it can dry out. It's looking pretty good. I think it'll be good to sift. This is why we try to remember to take the banana stickers off first. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be picking them out forever. Same thing with the windows and the envelopes if you shred them and use them. Take those out first. All right, so I'm going to move everything over to the side here and give them some food, and maybe I can get them to migrate. They can migrate down into the new stuff below it, and they can also migrate to the side. Uh, so worm casting is pyramid. Okay, so here we have our typical paper coffee feeding. I'm just going to leave that in a big lump over here. Yeah, there is a bit of a chance that it will um, heat up a bit, so I'm going to leave that all the way to one end. But this has actually been sitting for probably a month. This one's much older. So hopefully if it was going to heat up, it would have done so already. Uh, then I'm just going to cover it back up with the castings, try and level things out here. But I'm going to leave this open to the air.
their banana sticker. Nope, avocado sticker. Nope, lemon sticker. Alright, so that's good. We've got all of the stuff that needs to go up here on the top and I can start, you know, when it dries out then I can pull some off and maybe sift it, get it out of here and put it in the finished bin as well as the leftovers bin and, you know, maybe in a month or so, probably a month or two, we can get all of this out of here and then reload it with new bedding. Alright guys, if you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up, and if you're not already a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.